Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to Moments with Truth, which is a television outreach of the five gospel halls here in Tobago. We sincerely pray that you will be blessed as you view today's program. Shall we pray? Our blessed God, how kind are all thy ways to us. We give thee thanks for this day. Thank thee for life. Thank thee for the many blessings that thou hast bestowed upon us. Thank thee for the blessing of salvation and for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we are saved. And we give thee thanks for this opportunity that we can tell others of the Lord Jesus Christ of the Savior of sinners, one who is mighty to save and is, mighty to, and is able to save all that come to him by faith. So we give thee thanks for this medium we can use and all those who facilitate this program, Lord, we bring them to thee. And we pray that this program will continue to be a blessing to many souls. We pray, O oh God, that this, even this studio will be blessed and we ask the Lord that we continue to bless all the employees and we ask thy blessing and thy Holy Spirit guidance and leading even as thy word is declared from this medium that souls will be blessed, that many will be saved, that many will be delivered from darkness, from death unto life, from darkness unto light. So we praise and magnify thy name, we give thee thanks and look to thee for thy leading through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. We we'll read from 1 John, the epistle of John, first epistle of John, and chapter 4. First epistle of John and chapter 4. And we read verses 9 and 10. In this was manifested the love of God towards, toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And the Lord will be pleased to bless the reading of his precious word to our hearts for his dear name's sake. We are in a season where many celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many remember this child that was born in a manger, the young child that was heralded as Christ the Savior. So often we sing Christ the Savior is born. And here the Apostle John is telling us, in this was manifested the love of God toward us because God sent his only begotten son into the world. The Lord Jesus Christ came into the world for one purpose. And he came because he was sent by the Father. It is because of the love of God, God gave. So very often we 
celebrate Christmas in giving. We look forward for gifts. We give to others. But the greatest gift that we can receive is the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have received that gift. You know, sometimes you give someone a gift, but they don't appreciate it. They don't accept it. And God gave his son. Sad it is that many people don't appreciate that gift. If you don't unwrap that gift, if you don't receive that gift, it is nothing to you. And for the Lord Jesus Christ to come into the world, he had to be born. He had to be born of flesh. He had to become human, put on humanity. And when the Lord Jesus Christ was to be born, it was held by the angels. And we can possibly read from Matthew's Gospel and chapter 2 what was said of him. What was prophesied of this child to be born? And chapter 1 of Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 1, and we read from verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was exposed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to thee to take thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is interpret which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till he had brought forth until she had brought forth a first son, and he called his name Jesus. What I want you to understand is that the Lord Jesus Christ was not conceived by Joseph and Mary coming together. There was no cooperation from Joseph and Mary coming together. She was a virgin. And this was prophesied way back. The prophet Isaiah, he prophesied this. And now it is coming to pass. When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. And now the Lord Jesus Christ, to come into the world, to put on humanity, God manifest in the flesh. It is said, that his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. If the Lord Jesus Christ was to be born by Mary and Joseph coming together, he would have had sinful flesh. He would have been born in sin. Remember what the psalmist David said, In sin did my mother conceive me said, Behold, I was born in iniquity. The Lord Jesus Christ would have had the blood of human. But he, remember, Adam sinned. And because of Adam's sin, 
all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then the Lord Jesus Christ was not born by man, by an earthly father. But here it is said that before they came together, that is Mary and Joseph, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. This child was conceived in her, planted in, implanted in her by the Holy Ghost. Mary herself was bewildered. And Joseph, while he contemplated what to do, realizing that she was pregnant. And remember, there was, she would have been convicted. She was worthy of death to be put to death by stoning. And realizing the shame, realizing the punishment that would have been meted out to her because he loved her. As he was, he didn't want to make her a public example. And that is the time when the angel appeared unto him. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And we have to note as well that the Lord Jesus Christ was given a name even before he was born. A name was given to him and the reason for that name, a name for a reason. His name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The thing is, man and all men were sinners. Sin bring, brought forth death. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And man was in need of a redeemer, someone to deliver them from their sins. We need a deliverer. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the one to deliver us from our sins. He shall save his people from their sins. Since the foundation of the world, when God made man, God knew that man would transgress, that man would sin. And God in his love and his mercy, mercy, did not give man the punishment they needed, the punishment deserved, was, could be alleviated by someone who can redeem us from our sins. The Lord Jesus Christ is the great redeemer. We can have redemption through him. And the Lord Jesus Christ came and it was said, his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And this is what the Apostle John is saying. He's saying, in this was manifested the love of God toward us. The love of God toward us. Well, we were in such a condemned state. We were in an awful condition. Helpless we were to deliver ourselves. There was not any sacrifice that we could make for our sins. In the old economy, in the Old Testament, animals were slain. The blood of animals was shed for sins. But they could not have taken away sins. They could not take away sins because the writer of the Hebrews told us that. The blood of bulls and of goats, of heifers, of calves, whatever, were not able to take away sin. But the Lord Jesus Christ came. 
You see, this blood was shed. These sacrifices were made. These offerings were made. And they were not well pleasing to God. Many were not accepted by God. The blood of beasts were slain. But it was just a covering for sin. Just a covering for sin. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. But notice, the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world in order to offer himself a sacrifice for sin. That is why he was conceived of the Holy Ghost. Conceived of the Holy Ghost. So that his blood, richer blood, a blood that was not tainted, was shed for you and for me. And we are told this even by Peter, that the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ was acceptable. It is only the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was acceptable for our sins. And in 1 Peter and chapter 1 and verse 18, he says this, for as much as ye know that we were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation or your vain manner of life received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Without blemish and without spot. He went on to say, Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ was there before the foundation of the world. God, it was said, manifest in the flesh. He was with the Father from the beginning. Remember in creation, it is said, let us, let us make man in our own image and likeness. Who were the us? The Lord Jesus Christ. He was in creation. By him all things are made. Without him, Nothing was made. John said this in his gospel. Without him, nothing was made. And the Lord Jesus Christ, we see, here was manifested in flesh. And he was crucified for you and for me. He died an atoning death. And here we see that the apostle John is saying, in this was manifested the love of God toward us because God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. The Lord Jesus Christ himself said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. So we can have life. You can have life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Only through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the giver of life. He is the source of life. He is the fountain of life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ prophesied his death. He said, I lay down my life and will take it again. Because he is the giver of life. Remember, there were many who died. Remember Lazarus? And the Lord Jesus Christ raised him to life. That woman who was crying, that widow, 
They were going to bury her only son. Her husband was already dead. And you could imagine the, 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 the heart of this woman. And the Lord Jesus had compassion on her. He touched the buyer. And this son raised again to life. Remember Jairus' daughter. And the Lord Jesus Christ brought many to life. Himself was raised again. He is the resurrection and the life. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the source of life. He can give you life. He has given me life. He has given us life. But the Lord Jesus wants to give eternal life. Eternal life to you and to me. Thank God. I receive the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. What about you? The Lord Jesus wants to give you a great gift even for this Christmas. Eternal life. He wants you to receive that gift. And Paul writing to the Romans, he told them that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Will you receive that gift? And in order for the Lord Jesus Christ to put away sin and to give us eternal life, he must die. He went to the cross. And you know, sometimes we sing, do you worship the babe in the manger? and reject the man of the cross. Many people reject the Christ. Even when he was put before the people to choose between Christ and Barabbas, they chose Barabbas and they said, crucify him away with this man. They rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. There he was, rejected and forsaken of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Isaiah, he prophesied this. And it came to pass that the Lord Jesus Christ was rejected of men. And even today, many are rejecting him. Many are saying, I do not want this man to rule my life. They don't want to give their life to him. And maybe you do not want the Lord Jesus Christ to be your master. So you are rejecting him. Sad it is. And here we read that the Lord Jesus Christ was given. He was sent that we might have life through him. And it is said, hearing is love. Not that we love God. But he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. You see, God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In our rebellious state, when we rejected him, when we forsake him, when we did not want him, when our backs were turned to God, when we rebel against God, God still manifests his love towards us. God manifested his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We didn't love him, but he loved us. And because he loved us, he gave us the greatest gift that we can receive eternal life through Jesus Christ. As he said, that he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. The Lord Jesus Christ offered himself and offered for us that sacrifice that God was well pleased with. Something that was acceptable. And we read of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, or what was said of him in the book of Hebrews. This man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. What a sacrifice that was made. A great sacrifice 
the oh, a sacrifice that was well pleasing to God. God was not pleased with the sacrifice of the animals that were slain. He was not well pleased. But God was well pleased with the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, his son, and his blood. That blood that was shed availed for us. That blood has brought our redemption. That blood has paid the price for our sins. And you are to accept the price that was paid. Accept the gift that was offered that you can have forgiveness of sin. That blood can cleanse you from your sin. And without the shedding of blood, there is no putting away of sin. And the Lord Jesus Christ, he shed his blood. And thank God for man, for me, and for many others who were sinners lost. Our backs were turned to God. We did not want God. But now we can come even in the very presence of God because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We can join near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. We can come with boldness. We can join near, coming even in the very presence of God. We can say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. John said in his epistle in the, here, he said, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we can be called the children of God. We are now children of God because of the love of Jesus Christ. And now we can rejoice and give God praise for the amazing love of the Lord Jesus Christ, for his amazing love. And thank God for the amazing love, love that we did not deserve, but yet he bestowed such love upon us, upon you and for me. May God bless our hearts that we receive the Lord Jesus Christ and we appreciate his love towards us. Gracious God, we pray that this message will meet the hearts of many, will bless the hearts of many, and many will appreciate the Lord Jesus Christ and that great love which thou hast bestowed upon us, we give thee thanks. We give thee praise, all through thy Son, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for viewing today's program. We invite you to contact us at any of the media advertised or visit us at any of the meetings that appear on the screen. Dear friends, remember that Jesus saves, he keeps, and he satisfies. May God bless you.